Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. I call to order the meeting of the Manassas Park Governing Body for Tuesday, April 23rd, 2024. First, we have uh, approval of the agenda. There are several changes to the agenda. There's been a request to pull out 9A, Ordinance Years of Service Award, and place it under number six. So 9A becomes number six. Uh, also, there's an added citation to close session. Uh, Dean, would you please read the citations? Yes, it's uh, paragraphs three and five of subsection 2.2-37A of the Code of Virginia. Okay, thank you. Are there any other changes to the agenda? Hearing none, is there a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. Thank you. Please join us for a moment of silence. And Council Member Jubed, could you lead us in the pledge? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Liberty and justice for all. Uh, is there anyone who would like to make public comment? Okay, seeing no one and hearing no one, um, it's now time for the governing body to express our, our farewell thoughts to Laszlo. This is his last meeting. Uh, so Laszlo, you have worked tirelessly for this city. And the progress is all around us, we can see it. I remember when you interviewed for the position back in 2017, you were energetic, you were eager, and your intellect and your abilities were really obvious. Mm -hmm. So we're just so thrilled that, we, that you came to us at that time. Mm -hmm. Your time with us has brought the city back to financial health. Manassas Park has gone through a lot. Manassas Park went from taking revenue anticipation loans just to make payroll to having a positive fund balance of $16 million, to, laying, to regaining the city's credit rating, to laying the foundation for a successful downtown. And all of us are going to work very hard to make certain that the downtown is completed. You know, we appreciate you and we appreciate everything that you have done for the city. You know, really, you and staff make all of us look good. You know, we don't, we can't take credit for, for this. It's all the good options that staff provides to the governing body for us to vote on. So we're, we're really grateful to you for that. Thank you. I can only say that you were the right person in the right position at the right time. And we're grateful for that. So we wish you good luck always. Yeah. Council Member Javed. Sure. My question to you, Laszlo, is that did you know what the city's position was when you took the job? Uh, yeah, I mean, that was part of the interesting part for me. Well, so. kudos then, because yeah. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> not realize it was that bad, though. <laughs> <Right>. Yeah. <laughs> so, not an easy task. And you knew the challenges and you knew you were, what you were stepping into. So, like, uh, you know, uh, kudos and thank you for coming on board. Um, to make it, I don't want to go on too long, but you came on during the rough times, you accomplished a lot, you put the city in the right path, and I think the next manager that steps in your role is going to be successful because of you. Well, thank you for everything. Go ahead. Um, I want to thank you for your service to Manassas Park. Your dedication and commitment have helped us come through really hard times. Um, as Jeanette said, it's very easy to see what you've accomplished. We're sitting in it. Just go enjoy a book at the library or any of our events. But I want to thank you for the countless hours spent behind the scenes that we're not going to see. All of the time you put in with staff, with us, with contracts, with things we can't even imagine that you've done. I want to thank you for that, the sleepless nights, whatever you've sacrificed. We would not be in this position without you. Um, you're part of the Manassas Park family, and we're going to miss you. Um, but I wish you the best in Fairfax City, and I know that you're going to accomplish great things. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Palco, I appreciate everything you've done. Your commitment, your, everything, your management, not just us, but to the employees. When you came, we were over $170 million in debt. We're under $70 million, and a lot of it was 
reducing that was with your leadership. And a lot of the raises that the staff got and increases was about you pushing and advocating for them. So you've been a true advocate for the residents and the employees. So I appreciate your friendship and you know, I wish you the best on that next chapter over in the city of Fairfax and we will keep in touch and I'll go up there and see you like I did when you were from Lovettsville. Thank you. Councilmember Member Hampton. Well, I'm sure one day you'll write about your time here, especially managing through COVID, something no one I think ever managed or would imagine. So I, I want to say thank you. Thank you much for your service. And, you know, life is full of seasons. Unfortunately, this season here at Manassas Park ends, but you have a whole new season ahead of you with, new, you know, new adventures, and you'll do well. But thank you for your time here. And I'm sure at some point we'll cross paths because I'm down in Fairfax every now and then or even at BML or something. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. Can I, can I say a few words now? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I was going to say it for the end, but uh, since you guys started this off here so uh part of what attracted me to the city wasn't just the challenge but that when i interviewed with the council it seemed like there was common purpose and there's other jurisdictions where that that's not the case so i felt like the this was the challenge right but it was one that could be done because there was kind of a unified vision that the cha had to be fixed right and they wanted someone who could present ideas to fix it so i wanted to thank the uh governing body the current governing body the previous governing body the governing body that hired me for giving me this shot, letting me uh, stay here as, as long as I did, especially Mayor Rochelle and uh, Councilmember Carrera who, who are here from uh, the beginning as well, and, and all the council members who aren't here uh, right now, um, who, who I've served with, uh, had the pleasure of serving. I wanna thank you all for giving me this opportunity. Uh, when I was a young man and I joined the Army, I wanted to create public value, right? Do, do some good in this world, and I kind of felt left, let down in Afghanistan, uh, me and my peers did. Uh, like we weren't able to really accomplish the mission and we were we were let down and uh you know we, we lost some some of our, our teammates there and so i was looking for an opportunity when i got out to to s accomplish something in my life and and achieve some good public value and and this city was that opportunity so i thank you so much for having given me that opportunity to produce some good value for a deserving community when i was uh, pondering the job and spoke to mayor rochelle she always made the point how this is a, a diverse and welcoming community and that was so true. Uh, that's, I think, one of the greatest strengths of our, of the city here is the welcoming community. As soon as I moved here, I felt like I was home, right? And you don't always feel that in, in a job or uh, in a community, but everyone here was so nice to me. All the residents were incredibly nice as well. So I just, I felt like I was home. And that's a strength. That's not, you don't find that everywhere in this world where people are, are this nice and welcoming to everyone. So I, I I want to thank you guys for bringing me here and thank the residents as well, who all the residents who've been so nice to me and, and uh, uh, came out to all those town halls as well. I was always, always impressed uh, with all, everything they have going on in their lives, you know, taking care of their, their kids, working so hard, uh, this, you know, a hard working class community here in Manassas Park. But they'd come out and they'd listen to a lot of information because I'd always present a lot of information to them. They'd sit through it and they would ask awesome questions and we'd have a good conversation. It was just even though they're challenging to do the town halls, they were one of the best experiences I had in the city just to understand residents, uh, where they were coming from, engage with them on an intellectual basis versus kind of the negativity that you find on social media. It was great to do kind of that in-person interaction with them. And so I want to thank them for being so welcoming of, of the diversity that we have in our city. I think it's a, it's a great strength. Uh, and then finally, I want to thank the employees because that's, I think, the other major strength we have in the city that we can't take for granted is, is the employees. Um, they're the reason for the success here. Uh, they do more with less every day, right? They, they come to work and work hard, uh, even though they're under-resourced and underpaid when you compare us to, to the rest of our, our peers. And they come in here every day and they do a great work to serve our residents. And uh, they motivated me to work and uh, to stick around as long as I did because uh, I wanted to serve them and I wanted to help achieve some promises like that FY23 promise of Let's get some good pay raises in there. Uh, let's start reducing the tax rate. Let's cut our, cut our debt and make the future better. And uh, they, they inspired me every day, and I want to thank them for everything they did. Um, I, this was the best team I've ever had, and I was honored to serve with you guys, and you guys should be proud of what you guys can accomplish with the resources that you have, because I see it. You know, I see the rest of the region, kind of how they're, how they're resourced, how those employees are paid, and, and you guys just come in here and, 
and do the most with, uh, with the bare minimum, and, and you guys are so welcoming. I've worked in many organizations, uh, and this was a great organization, a great team, uh, and I was happy to come to work every day and, and uh, proud to serve you all as well. Um, and so I hope our residents understand how lucky they are to have, have you guys uh, serving them. So thank you all so much. And we have a plaque for you. Do you want a picture? Picture? Oh, you know what? Could we take a picture with the entire governing body? Well, we're minus two people, but you know. Photoshop. Okay. Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's no public hearing, so moving on to <coughs> recognitions. Uh, number six, this would be recognition of employees of the City of Manassas Park for years of service. Uh, the five-year years of service would be Latonya Perry, Claudia Ventura, Stephen Oxendine, Jacob Stinnett, Nicholas Frieza, John Kane, Roger Robinson, Ashley Holland, Tony Jenkins, Carla Valley, Maria Solis. Uh, the 10 years of service, uh, we have Andrew Loving, Robert Clark, Edward Gibson, Michael Arrington. 15 years of service, Sandra Wolf, Timothy Williams, 20 years of service, Sue Jerjevic. 25 years of service, Patricia Brendel. 30 years of service, Sheila Rowland and Patricia Dellinger. The motion is to approve, the recommended motion is approval of the employee years of service awards and associated monetary bonuses in recognition of these employees years of service and their dedication to the city of Manassas Park. Do we have a motion? Moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. Thank you. Madam Mayor, while they're doing that, may I, Madam Mayor, over here. Yes. While I'm doing that, uh, could I say uh, really quick? 25 years ago, I was part of the electoral board that hired Trisha Brindle. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. It is. Everything comes full circle. It right? does. Come on, 
stand behind them. Oh. Yeah. Let's move these chairs. Yeah. Oh, we're getting Yeah. If Liberty was closer, we'd go to the football games. I would actually go to the Thank you, everyone. Thank you. If UVA was closer, we'd go to Okay, moving on to consent agenda. Consent agenda consists of the approval of and the authorization for the city manager to negotiate and sign the necessary contractual documents with Offix LLC to lease four copiers as presented and subject to final city attorney review. Do we have a motion? Moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. Thank you. Moving on to unfinished business. That would be 10A, uh, purchase of building of the uh, purchase of a building for the community development department. Public hearing having been held on April 9th. Nothing to add for me. Okay. Are there any questions or comments from the governing body? Um, is this the, the digital drive? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, oh yeah, the good question was uh, for if we use the ARPA funds to buy the, the building, how much can we use and what uh, amount from the city yeah. we don't have to borrow? Yeah, so right now, you're from the general fund, you're borrowing $2 million to buy the building. Um, in FY20, so that's in 24. Um, you can use ARPA funds right now. And then in FY25, we have uh, what's called the Signal Hill Park renovations, right? You can wait to do that project in 25 when you receive the DR Horton money so that you don't risk the reserves. It's, a, it's an option you have. They, they would still be able to do the pavilion and the uh, tennis court resurfacing. Um, and they would still even have a little bit of additional money for some of the uh, water park stuff, but it would probably be better to do that all together. Um, so that's from a timing standpoint, I, I think minimizes risk. If that's, if that's your, your concern, I think it's a, it's a good option to go with. Yeah, as long again as, as those funds are then shifted, so we still have them in the budget, but they're paid for by the DR Horton money. Uh, whereas this project now is paid for by ARPA. So then what, what uh, amount do we need to, because right now we're taking 3.5 total? Uh, so it's 2 million from, so you, there was already uh, in the budget. Oh, so uh, well, how, how much yeah. is the? Let me pull up the slide. That'll be, that'll be easier to show you that. How much is the, the renovation cost for the, uh, the park? Okay, 
So this is this is the key slide here. So um, to buy, it's this, and you need this amount. And the ARPA fund for the Signal Hill Park renovation is 2.7 million. So you would still have 700,000 left over, right? Still to do again the pavilion, the tennis court resurfacing, and then when you get the DR Horton money, end of FY25 or start of FY26, then you do the innovation. And right now, or the rest of the water park building. And right now, that's currently in design. Uh, so this gives us a little bit more time. We won't feel as rushed to get a contract in for that by November. So I think it could work out where we still do the park renovations. And then again, for renovation costs of that building, my recommendation was to wait three years, right? Once you buy the building, collect the lease revenues for three years, let DR Horton build out the, the, the units so you're collecting taxes on that, use that new tax revenue then to fund the renovations of the building needed. Yeah. That way you're not impacting the, the budget. So with this option, then we would take away the two million. Yeah, this would disappear. That would disappear yeah. from the city funds. Yeah, and so then, this, uh, this would be called, so th these three, or these two land sale proffers would disappear, right? right? And you'd be, um, uh, you'd be offsetting those with the, um, the ARPA funds. With, yeah, with the ARPA funds. Yep. And then the amount from the water reserves will go down to 800,000, 900,000? No, no, no. I, I, so if you want to use 700,000 as well, but I, I, I wouldn't do that because you can't use water and sewer money okay. for the Signal Hill Park innovation. So I would keep this the same, right? Yeah. So you would just no longer have this, this carryover, right? Yeah. Remember, because you had more money here. So these three, uh, these two would go away. You'd put two million in, this would be zero. You wouldn't have a carryover anymore. Right. But then eventually you'd get this money, right? And then you'd have that, that surplus, especially the tap fees would create that surplus still in the future to help you out with renovations. And we could still reimburse later the water and sewer. Yeah, that's exactly, that's your decision point for this here, right? right? If you reimburse, then that amount drops. So your profit is to that, that your profit, the, my recommendation was to fund the, the schools, yeah. facilities with, the, with that profit. Your profit's either four million or three million or less if you wanna re, re, uh, reimburse the water and sewer fund. Yeah. Okay, so, so it would be I mean, for, if you wanna reimburse the water and sewer fund, it would drop by another million. So it would be two to three million in profits which could also be a cushion to your, one of your questions in case right. the renovation costs are a little bit a little more. Bit more. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, to the governing body, then my question is, can we hold off on the renovation for the park? This option will take away the, at least $2 million from city money. I, I have a question oh. for Lazarus. Oh, sure. Okay. Um, if we go with that option, would that delay or would that delay the um, ADA improvements? Uh, for the water park? Yes. Yes, it would. It yeah. would. I um, mean, right now we're, we're rushing Jay and his team to issue a contract for that work no later than November. Okay. Right? Uh, what this does is give them a little bit more time to fully flush okay. out the, the design, evaluate options, okay. uh, and hold I, off maybe six I have a concern months. about delaying the uh, ADA improvements. Okay. I, that, that's a concern. But I, I mean, it's not a bad idea. Comment? Yes, ma'am. On that same topic, how old is the water park? Is it around 30 years old? I would say at least. There's Jay's. Jay. Yeah, at least 30 years old. Okay. And if I'm not mistaken, the actual water park itself, the internal part of that water park, not the building, but the internal part, is in not the best shape. Yeah, it's in right. It definitely needs to be, all the whole thing, the building and the water park itself are in really bad shape and definitely need to be replaced. Yeah, but we have that in FY25. We don't have that now. This purchase is now, so I think there's time that we still have for, for that project. Okay, and so if we went with Council Member Hasib's recommendation, then when would we start construction on the water park? Yeah, once you get rezoning and site plan approved and you get those funds in your account, then, then you, you then direct Jay, okay, now go ahead and, and uh, issue the RFP for the actual uh, reconstruction there. So are we looking to fiscal 25? Yeah, the hope is the end of fiscal 25, you would get there. Now you would probably want to do the work in the summer, right. so you'd have to go two more seasons now uh, with the current water park. So the goal would be to be renovated before uh, season of, of 20, what was that? So this summer's 2024. So the 2026 summer season is when you'd have a new water park. Okay, so sometime yeah. between calendar year 2025 and spring of calendar year 2026, mm -hmm. we would, um, demolish 
I, I would say sometime between Labor Day of calendar year 25 and spring of calendar year 26, we would demolish, yeah. rebuild, Absolutely. and cut the ribbon yeah. Memorial Day. Okay. So it and, takes, and it could be quicker if years? they if they get, <laughs> let's say they get rezone and site plan approved within a few months here, you can still stick with the same timeline. Once their site plan approved, you know you're getting that money. So you can then at that point kick it off and try to get it done before next summer. So there, there would still be that hope as well. Okay. It just it so, minimizes financial risk for the city to right, do it this yeah. way. So from yeah. start to finish, how, lo how long does it take and when, when will it be usable? That I don't know. I okay. think I, um, once the design is done, I think we'll have more information on kind okay. of how, what the process would be. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, is there a concern if it were to be pushed back until 26 that the cost would go up? Oh, the cost. Yes, that is one. Every year you wait, potentially the project cost mm -hmm. would go. That is a serious concern. Yeah. That's why I said don't like don't even wait for this money to get in your bank account. As soon as it's site plan approved, mm -hmm. execute. Or as soon as even if it's rezoned, you know it's going to get site plan approved. You can then make the decision there. Because remember, under this construct, you're, you were borrowing from reserves. Now you're just borrowing from reserves from that project. But you have a little bit more clarity now. It's been rezoned. It's in the process of being site plan approved. So you will get more information from Jay and Mark this fall, right? Is that when they're done with design? So by this fall, you'll get more information about the water park renovations. You guys will be better informed. Hopefully by that time, J.R. Horton's already rezoned. So you guys can then pull the trigger there. But you'll, so the timeline wouldn't be delayed at all. And will we be borrowing less than we are by, if we follow Council Member Javed's recommendation, will we be borrowing less for the water park um, than if we were to go with what's on the screen? Our borrow, I probably doesn't say it right, but our borrowing, which would cost us more to borrow? None. They would be neutral. The only okay. way this would cost us more is to, to Vice Mayor Mansing's point. If, if DR Horton's rezoning drags for like another year or something, then the price tag of the water park goes up. That's the risk with this. Yeah, yeah. but it's the risk right now with building anything, right? Mm -hmm. okay. But I will say they're working very hard right now, DR Horton, to, to get the rezoning submitted. Yeah, I mean, my, my comment is that I, mean, I don't see DR Horton waiting, waiting for a whole year. They're, they're probably going to finalize site plan this summer. Yeah. And we'll, we'll just move. Uh, According to the, the original plan, as for the water park, but at this point. So we, how many months will that take? So uh, to Councilmember Javet's point, if DR Horton is able to get their rezoning this summer, there's no delay, or even this fall, there's no delay in the water park project. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They, yeah we'd I'm, be on I'm the same timeline. About the, I'm just yeah. concerned about the delay in the water park. Yeah. As Vice Mayor Mensing said, there's a, a the costs will go up. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned about having the ADA facilities available for residents and visitors. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'm a little concerned about the timing from an ARPA perspective with the design of the water park that we may not make that November cutoff anyways. This okay. buys us an extra cushion here okay. to take our time okay. with is that, that project. Why, is that why you brought forward the, the suggestion? Yeah, again, I was, I was evaluating Councilmember Javed's, there were great questions, yeah. and I was thinking a little bit more about this. Yeah. As you said, what else can we do, right? Can we use ARPA money? That's okay. when I looked at the ARPA budget and said, okay. this might make sense to, to utilize the funds because we're doing this right now. Uh -huh. We use, And that way we spend ARPA money quicker in case Congress ever decides to change its mind and suck this money back from the jurisdictions. We spend this money now, uh, and then it gives Jay and Mark a little bit of breathing room uh -huh. to get that contract so they don't have to get it awarded by November, they can award it in January or February. And th that way, if they do, with, Jan with ARPA, they couldn't do that. They can't award after a certain timeline, or else you can't use ARPA funds for it. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a follow up? No. You look like you might. No, I'm just. Council Member Carrera, do you have questions? Uh, no, the only question I have is about the DR Horn. I know you spoke to them about the utility piece of it, but that'll be part of site plan review, correct? Yeah, it should be can part of rezoning. More directly into um, sorry, it's about the utility undergrounding, the one I raised uh, a few weeks ago, just, but that'll be part of site plan review. It should correct? be part of rezoning. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay. Just one last follow up question. Yeah, just one last thing. Yes. I remember you said that because this is rental, it's actually quicker it is, yeah. to go from plan to mm -hmm. actual move in than residential. So that also works in our favor as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, from a rep for this model. It absolutely works in our favor because they 
they can build out uh, quickly, kind of like an apartment building gets built all at once. They can build all those sticks quickly, whereas you see here at Stanley Martin, they're kind of building piece by piece, and, and depending on how quickly they're selling, that's what kind of drives their, their construction. Okay. Well, since it doesn't sound as though there will be a huge impact on the timeline, if, if any, um, I, I, would, I would give that a yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, we saved $2 million, too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, so it's short-term borrowing from right, ourselves. Right, yeah. right. What? We don't really save the $2 million. We just yeah. don't do a short-term borrowing <laughs> from general fund money. Yeah. Yeah. We just use borrowing our Borrowing from yeah. the city. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then we actually spend some time and get what we want for the water Yeah, we park, can take our time design. with the design. And we don't have to feel rushed with the RFP. They can evaluate the contractors. They're not going to be, it's not going to be a rush process this fall. Okay. Right. How, what is your opinion? I am fine with okay. Council Member I'm, I'm fine with what it. What is your opinion, Buzz? Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a go. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. So that does not, I don't believe that changes the motion. Does no, that change the motion, Dean? It doesn't, because we're just talking about the funding sources. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Okay, the recommended motion is that the governing body approve and authorize the mayor to sign a purchase and sale agreement to purchase the real property known as Lot 3, Digital Park Business Center Phase 1 from NBP Digital Park LLC for $6 million as presented subject to final city attorney review. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the budget work session. Okay, uh, before we open it up to the uh, departmental Q&As, Q uh, I did want to go over this with the governing body. You guys should have a copy in front of you. Uh, so kind of as a reminder, I did rename one of these. So this used to be the status quo, but really what I meant by status quo before is following the strategic plan where we committed to cutting the tax rate by one penny each year and doing at least a 2.5% COLA, right? That was kind of the strategic plan, plan. None of this stuff changed from last week that I presented, but then some additional requests are made to evaluate some additional models. Council Member Hampton wanted to see what happens if we do stick with the current personal property tax rate and do the lowest real estate tax rate. Uh, what would that do? You, it would be a 0% COLA for the next three fiscal years and then still have a $600,000 deficit in 25 and 26, and all these positions would still be frozen. In that model, um, and a variant of that came from Councilmember Carrera to get close to that 139, 139, and maybe a little bit higher above the the current personal property tax rate. Uh, you would be able to do a cola of 2.5 percent, but it would incur a deficit in 25 and and beyond, and you wouldn't be able to unfreeze the zoning uh, of person. And Councilmember Javed asked, well, let's look at the model keeping a 143 tax rate. So not, essentially don't increase or don't decrease any tax rates and don't increase any tax rates. And what would you be able to afford? You'd be able to afford a 2% COLA and you would be able to unfreeze the zoning position. And then I kind of came up with the status quo. So I'm calling that the status quo because that's, you're not changing any tax rates there. So uh, I call the status quo balance, which is, Again, we've committed to both our residents and our employees, so this is kind of like a shared thing where we do a little bit for our employees and a little bit for our residents in terms of uh, the real, real estate, like what we can afford okay. to do right now. And you can unfreeze the zoning enforcement position with the strategy. So these are the nine tax models that you guys have to kind of consider, um, or you know, of course there's other options you guys have, but these are the nine that we've discussed. Uh, let me know if there's any questions on these. Really quick, if we were doing based on like a fifty thousand dollars salary, what would that one percent cola look like? Uh, that would be. What is that? That's why I asked you because math is not my strong point. Five hundred. Five hundred bucks. Yeah. That's like. <laughs> it's not much of anything, is it? I have a question. Yes. <coughs> I request the information for a 40 hour work week with mm -hmm. one hour, eight hour day, one hour lunch within the eight hours. Instead of working, employees working eight and a half hours, they work eight hours. I think you're going to survey the employees. What is the response to that? Yeah, I'm doing that in the next three days. I'm meeting with every single employee over the next three days to talk to kind of do a farewell meeting with them. But we have a, Valerie and I have a survey uh, for them. And so we'll, we'll report back on the results. Do you, do you assume they don't have any costs? 
Hmm? No, that won't have any cost at so, all. So that can be implemented part of this. Cause yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah, regardless of what scenario you guys go with, that can be implemented. Okay, so. yep. I think uh, my option is I'm leaning towards the status quo balanced. Hmm. I said I'm leaning towards the status quo balanced option where we don't increase any taxes. We still reduce, what is it, a penny on the real estate. 0.5, yeah. 0.5 or half of the, whatever. And then uh, I still have the zoning enforcer in place as well. Okay. So, so that helps the residents, that helps the, the employees. And uh, I think that's the win-win situation there. Okay. And what I see is that last year, we did a 6% increase. I, I kind of feel like that could be carried on because normally we, we don't go that high. Um, it's usually 2 or 3%. No, but we it, doubled it, it last well, year. Well, true, but we're trying to um, compete with jurisdictions around us. I mean, right. we've, we've got to recruit, we've got to retain the good people that we have. Well, I understand. You know, we, we need yeah. to be competitive. Um, but I can't just, I can't uh, do any tax increase. I just can't uh, support that. I think uh, Councilmember Hampton has a question. Yeah, or yes. a thought. What we, I agree that we can't we can't increase taxes. And let's face it, everything is going up all around us. Um, we're all struggling. You know, when a thing of eggs costs what, three times more than it did four years ago. Yeah, well, you're right because when the when the national media quotes the inflation figure of two and a half percent, that's not reflective because meat and eggs and milk they've gone up double digits. Right. Yeah. So I was thinking that maybe what we can do so that we can find some extra money to give to increase the COLA, because 1% is not much of anything. It's not. That's not enough. We can go through the budget, and perhaps we can find, as, a, as, as the governing body, go through the budget and find some places where we can slim some things down so that we can increase that COLA. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's... I, I, I think that's fair. Because I, I don't want to give up the zoning staffer, the enforcement staffer. I think that that particular staff position contributes to the quality of life right. for residents across the city. And not only that, we've added some um, things to our code right. that's going to require zoning yes. to uh, do um, a little bit more. It's time for us to be proactive. Mm -hmm. It really is. I mean, we've got overcrowding. We've got parking problems. We've got garbage problems. We have various types of community maintenance problems, so this this staffer will really have an impact. Right, and it affects the whole entire city. Also affects us, you know, the the look and feel of the city affects yeah. bringing in businesses. Yeah, it, it's yeah. wide reaching. Yeah. So that's my recommendation. If we can do the status quo, but if we jointly go through that budget, right. find agreed upon ways where we can reduce certain areas. Um, and then we can get increase the COLA so that we can do a win-win for everybody, the residents and, and right. the employees. Right, right. So we might actually have to have a, like our true work session where we break out the, the Excel document and someone fiddle with the numbers as we work through it. What, what you, is the goal? Do you mean the status quo or the status quo balance? Oh, so, sorry, status quo balance. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, what is the goal for the COLA? 2%, 3%? I think 2% at the minimum. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the budget itself is already tight as it is. I mean, I, I agree we should, we could look, trim some fat somewhere. Yeah. Um, but um, that's, uh, any uh, departments that were surplus last fiscal year? Oh, you achieve budget surpluses? Right. Almost every department did. Uh, the only reason why DSS didn't was because of CSA, not because of the rest of the, and CSA is a mandatory program. so. All our departments spend what they need, but it's right. getting harder and harder mm -hmm. for them to stay under yeah. as everything, as all prices yeah. go up. But again, they only spend what they need. We, we have, take pride in staying under budget here. We don't spend, it's not, June comes around, and we don't say, oh, we gotta spend it yeah. or else we lose it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I wouldn't look at where you're achieving surpluses because then you're gonna start creating a culture of spend it or lose it, mm -hmm. right? So I'd evaluate program priorities and, and make decisions that way because our departments are fiscally okay. responsible and I want to keep that culture here of okay. spending what you need. Okay. So in your opinion, is there any place in the budget that we could do what Council Member Hampton has suggested? 
Yeah, it's, it's a tight budget. Yeah, uh, it is we'll a tight I budget. think we'll have to look, yeah. look it over. I mean, I don't want us to go through yeah. the motions and then come up empty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? And again, you have to look at reoccurring costs to yeah. reduce, not just one time. Yeah. Um, but we can we can dive that back deeper into it, and uh, it'll be about. I'm sorry, what? We can dive deep into it. It's about two hundred thousand dollars more. I think we got to uncover if okay. you want to get to the two percent, but we'll we'll, uh, we'll look deeper into it and see what we can find. Okay. Okay. And I think that's it falls upon us as well to look at it as, as well to figure out where we can come up with it, you know okay. that amount. I'd, I'd like to hear his recommendation uh, so, first. I'm supportive of the strategic plan model, which gives a 1% reduction. It gives a 2.5% COLA. I'd like to see a 3% COLA. I'd like to just unfreeze the zoning one, but freeze the other two. Um, the 40 hours gives a half hour back every day, so about two and a half hours. It gives a, almost probably a 0.5% COLA back, but I'd like to get to a 3% COLA. A 3% COLA, just unfreeze the zoning, freeze the other two. Unfortunately, everything is just too expensive to live here in this area, and it's, it's just a hardship for employees that they don't get something that's fair. So kind of similar track, but find the funds to, to just, Council Member Hampton's strategy, find funds. But instead of finding funds for additional COLA, it's find funds to so I, unfreeze my, the zoning. My position is just unfreeze zoning. The other two uh, freeze uh, But zoning. you have to come up with the money for it. No, I agree. Yeah, I okay. agree. I would just identify, try to get to 3%, and then you get the, you get the eight-hour thing. It gives them about a half right there. Okay, so try to get to 3% COLA. I would like to get to a 3% call on. Which one were you favoring? I uh, this one here. Top right. Top right. So it gives the residents a one cent rate reduction. Okay. Well, that freezes. Did you say unfreeze? Just the zoning one. Just the zoning? Just the zoning one. Yeah. So that okay. gives you probably about 100,000, or yeah. probably between the other two for at least a year. Yeah. And they get the 0.5 for the 40 hours, probably back okay. anyways. Plus, you get try to get another 0.5 additionally. So they're basically getting about 3.5. Okay, so I, I want to cool. confirm something. Um, when you say freeze building and parking, now that we do not, we don't part with the parking officer that we have right now, is that right? We do. It's so okay. I have not this recommended. This is just future hires. Yeah, I have not recommended getting rid of any position. It's purely just positions that are unfilled, freeze not them. hiring. Okay, yep. thank you. Okay. Well, my, another question is if we're trying to get to the 2% COLA, then the status quo will make sense. Uh, it has uh, everything that we're looking for. Yeah. I mean, the 0.5 reduction in real estate tax is not going to do much either, but we could do, we could do the real estate tax reduction uh, next We year. have the highest tax rate in the state. I ran specifically that would vote against any budget that doesn't have a penny reduction. It, um, our assessments came out the other day. My house went up 60000 The previous year went up thirty. The previous year before that, up twenty. So we're, under this model, we're still paying a lot more taxes. We, I believe we have to do some diligence for the residents to get the tax rate down. It's just a penny. So your, your, your option is the strategic plan? Yes. The but with the 3% COLA? I would 3% right COLA three. and unfreezing the zoning. Just zoning. Yeah. So you get 100,000 possibly from the other two positions with FICA and everything, or a little bit more, probably about 120, correct? What's that? That's about 120,000 between the two other positions, correct? Which position? The building and the parking. No, it's a lot more than that. So there's about 150,000 there? No, they're already frozen here, in this model. They oh, so, okay, I thought you, I thought yeah, you unfroze already, zoning. Those are oh, okay, I thought you unfroze yeah. zoning on that. So I would just yeah. unfreeze zoning. So that's what I'm saying. So you want unfreeze zoning, increase mm -hmm. the COLA, and yes. then don't touch the property tax. Yes. That's going to that's gonna be hard to do. I would be open to going into reserves and taking a quarter million from it. We are, it's $19 million in there. It's the people's money. It's the residents' money. Most of us don't even have savings accounts. I do not. So Can you know. repeat that again so, about reserves? I, I would be supportive of taking a quarter million out of reserves because we're at 19 million reserves. We increased it by 2 million last year. I, I find it that many people in the city here don't even have savings accounts. They can't save. I can't save. And it places a hardship on, it, on everybody, and it's the people's money. So and I think the residents, I mean, the employees have worked hard enough just with the cost of living in, the, in this, this area out of most areas in the country. It's very expensive to live here. So every other jurisdiction is doing about, you know, about 4%. So I, 3%, I think, is fair. 3% COLA? Yes, with the 40-hour thing as well. With taking money from reserves. Which option I, is that? Which option are you looking for? It's not an option. It's not an option. I'm adding on to it. It's not, it's not any of these. It's, okay. it's taking from this and just kind of adding it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You can even say it's, it's what, what you guys want here, but cutting this half a penny more and increasing this by 
to instead and, of and yeah. digging it into our savings account mm -hmm. exactly to do that okay. i do not advise because how will we do it again the following year yeah, we it's, would gonna, have yeah, to it's not it's not a one-time thing it'd be recurring so right yeah yeah the, the 250 i'm not for that uh, okay. borrowing money what say it again borrowing from the reserves that's a no-go yeah, for me uh, I, no I, I, for me my, my language is different. Yeah. It's borrowing from the people who actually pay into the system, which are hoarding their money. So that's, that's the way I phrase it. We're not hoarding the money. It's for I a think. rainy day. It's yeah. what's well, raining now. Well, it might be raining, but it, we could have a thunderstorm. I, I'm living in a <laughs> thunderstorm. Yeah, I mean, if the bottom falls out of the economy. Like it did in 2008? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we need those reserves to survive. I would say it's falling out for many people in the community. I'm sorry? I, I would say it's falling out for many people in the community. So. I mean, if we want to compromise, right? Let's compromise. Then let's compromise, right? Let's get our COLA, let's unfreeze the zoning, and then do a slight reduction on this property tax, real estate but, property. But we can't do 1% And no increase on taxes. So which option is that? But we can't do 1% COLA. It's slap in the face. It impacts right. morale. Right. That's just, that's way too low. $500 a year? And then you get taxed on, you get what about three hundred? Yeah, and then next year, if our financial position is better, then we could we could offer more. But I mean, we I, we give. I can't support one percent. Last year we gave three two raises plus bonuses, right? So we I mean, did. It's not like we're forgetting about our staff, but they're still getting their increase. But if we want the best of all worlds, we have to compromise somewhere. Yeah. Okay, we do. We do. I'm well, I don't agree that we uh, increased water tax two years ago. Now we're increasing. Uh, property tax this year or, or debating about it I mean and then they're reducing the real estate just to offset the cost for the city I mean it just doesn't make make sense on increasing another tax uh, burden on the residents too so but we are increasing the tax burden on the residents because the house pro property has gone up they've gone up an average my assessment went up 60,000 they went up 30 last year 20 yeah. year every year my tax has gone up about $600 a year $700 well, a guess year. what that's equity now Oh, is that equity? <laughs> so, I, so, I, so I have to sell my house and leave. So your, your intent, you your house, your you intent is moving to push me out of the city? That's all what right, they do so, in New York. Um, so we all know that we, you know, we, we're not in favor of a 1% COLA because no. that's just yeah. awful. I wouldn't want a 1% COLA. Yeah. Um, at that point, I would just say just take, just take it back. Um, we want to reduce the real estate tax. We don't want to increase the personal property tax because I think car values are still going up, aren't mm -hmm. they? Yeah. I just want to say for the record, I'm not against increasing the personal property tax. I don't know about $4, but I'm not against increasing that. There's so many choices here. Is there, I'm looking at the far right bottom one. Have we discussed doing um, $1.40 for, for RE, the 3.25 PPT, 2% COLA? What would that do to the uh, 6 million over 10 years? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? So you're looking at this model here. Yes, but I'm, I'm changing the numbers. One, $1.40 for, for RE tax, that would be, a, we, we would be lowering the taxes because that's what residents yeah, gotcha. want to see. They want to see And doing taxes. this, okay, so what would that do? And then increase the personal property tax to 3.25. It will probably cut the deficit down to around $400,000 and then over 10 years, about $4 million. So it would still be a problem. Yeah, yeah, financially. Okay. Yeah. What if the cola was two percent? What's that? What if the cola was two percent? I'd have to plug that in. I can't. Okay. Some things I can do off the top of my head, but other things I got to plug it in. They're all okay. kind of related. Okay. If you could do that calculation and present that to us. Okay. And then again, to but to Councilmember Javet's point, in that scenario, you're still freezing the zoning person. You won't get your zoning then. Yeah. Okay. With that option. Even by reducing the cola to two percent. No, because we're still in a hole. You'd still be in a major still deficit. Still in a deficit, so yeah. almost okay. 500. Are there some that we know we don't want? Maybe that's the easiest way. Huh? Are there some that we know we don't want and just cross those off the list? Oh, you talk about the, the, the options? List. Yeah, the options. Okay. Well, I don't want those last three. If that involves um, freezing the zoning uh, inspector, then I, I would not support the last three. You mean the, the, the three the right, right the, the, the three on the, the right column. column. Okay. Right. Yeah. Because we have to get control of illegal renting. So we know zoning's a pri for me zoning is a priority. Yeah. 
I have no problems with ignoring, you know, not pursuing the three on the right. Same. I agree. With the yeah, the X through these. Okay, okay. Okay. Well, how does everybody feel about slashing the, the th third column? No, I'm, you probably don't want to do no, that. No, I'm fine. I just I need a, a penny reduction on the tax rate for me to vote for any budget. Can you speak I, louder? I, I would need a, t a penny reduction for me to support any budget on the tax you rate. You need a penny reduction on yes, the tax rate. Yes, at least. That was my commitment to the yeah. residents. So. Yeah. And I, at minimum, I'd like to give the employees at least a 2.5 COLA. Mm -hmm. Okay. So right now I mean, we have a dollar forty-three tax rate. So you would be satisfied with a dollar forty-two. I'd be satisfied with dollar forty-two and just. And keeping the zoning person as well. Yeah. Okay. The other the other ones can be frozen. Okay. I don't think we're far apart from all these numbers. I think we can get somewhere close yeah, to where we close. want. We just have to, like I said, you know, look yeah. at the. There's probably some. I know the budget's slim, but there might be places where yeah. we can yeah. find some savings. Um, if everyone could start looking through the budget, finding those savings on your own, and then I want to hear a, a recommendation from Laszlo. But we can be working on our right. looking through the budget ourselves and emailing one another, saying, what do you think of this? What do you right. think of that? Okay. Uh, is that okay mm -hmm. with you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry to make more work for you, but... Uh, <laughs> Well, it's actually this Keith now. Huh? It'll be Keith. Oh. <laughs> Good luck, <Sorry>. team. <laughs> okay. Okay. So now it's just departmental Q and A's. If you guys have any questions for any of the departments. Okay. Um, the only question I have in looking through the the material is. Do this for Chief Lugo. Do the police dogs when they when they come to us are they fully trained or do they have to then be trained? So the the, the, the amount that we put on there would do the training for the dog too. Training also. Okay. Okay. You must get a good rate because I heard that training is more expensive than the actual price of the dog. There is going to be an increase in July 1st. I think they're going to come up to 9000 for the dog, which is considered a green dog, and then another six to 7000 to train the dog. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And, I, and this is, I went through the budget, and I looked that um, a lot of places have training. You, you know, I know you probably can't. All the folks that have training in the budgets, I know you probably can't answer this today, um, but if you could work through the city manager's office, I'd like to know how many trainings that is, and especially the conferences, how many conferences that is, and how many staff members, excuse me, staff members are going to the training. Um, that would be most helpful. Are you talking about all departments or one department? Uh, I saw it in PD, Here. Parks and Recs, and Fire Department. I don't have any questions. I appreciate the, uh, what's put forward from the department heads. I know you do a great job, and thank you, Mr. Palco. So I don't have any questions. No questions. Do you no. have a follow-up question? No, no. just okay. get the information okay. through. Questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really like the way this was broken down, so I appreciate that a lot. I just had a clarification question for Jay, I think, um, regarding the library. State funds, is that just used for books, resources, e-books, things like that? Is that where the state funding goes towards? Yeah. Okay, thank you. That was a yes for those who didn't hear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Councilmember Javed? No questions? Okay. Thank you. These Thank are you these these um, these documents are great. Thank you. Yeah. I like it was the way easy. the budget is set up. Mm -hmm. It was easy uh, to read, I'll tell you that yeah. much. Yeah. I'm sorry. It was easy to read and absorb. Yes, very easy. Yes. Okay. So we appear to be done with the budget work session, unless you have any further comments left. I don't know. <coughs> okay. We're approaching our second public comment time. Is there anyone who would like to make public comment? Right down here. Yeah. Seeing no one and hearing no one, we'll move to the governing body. Yeah. The only comment I have is that we have a cleanup this Saturday. 
over at Lower Camp Park, also known as Independence Park, from 10 to 12. And we'll, if we don't, if we'll do the park and the surrounding streets. So it's down Lower Kent. Okay. <clears throat> Um, city manager's report, do you have anything to share? Uh, no, I said my comments earlier, but just uh, thanks again. It's an honor to be signing out tonight. Thank you. Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, our next is closed session. Dean, would you please read us into closed session? Yes, uh, I recommend the governing body go into a closed meeting for the following reasons. To discuss and consider the disposition of city-owned real property, Fair discussion in an open meeting would adversely affect the bargaining position and negotiating strategy of the city, and to discuss two separate prospective businesses and industries where no previous announcement has been made of their interest in locating in the city, pursuant to paragraphs three and five, respectively, of subsection 2.2-3711A of the Code of Virginia. Okay, do we have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, motion carries. Thank you. We'll take a five minute comfort break. <laughs> 